Hi there. This is John Levensold for KillerPHP.com. And this is the, I think we're the sixth video. I think we're the sixth or the seventh video in this series. Seventh video in this series. And we're going to be talking about uh, time zones and intervals between dates. And we're going to be building on an existing example, which I've got here, of a post and a author table. Basically, I've got a one-to-many relationship between the authors and the posts. So one author, many postings. But we're going to modify our schema in this particular tutorial to look at how we can essentially work with dates and use the date functionality inside of MySQL to add delays or expiration dates for the publishing of content. This is similar to how the very popular blogging platform WordPress does it, where you want to have something like a blog post that is future posted or is posted you know, a week from now or an hour from now or a day from now or what have you. Uh, the same thing can be done very easily just by performing a couple of neat MySQL tricks. Um, and yeah, that's about it. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is just I'm going to select this part of my last tutorial video and I'm going to create a new file, paste it in, hit save, and this time I'm going to call this uh, timestamps and timing.sql. Now there's two features that I really want to cover here. One is timestamping and if you do any kind of work with a database, being able to mark the time that something was either modified or created can be a great and very low cost way of adding the first most basic kind of auditing to a system. And MySQL has some primitive features that can be helpful. If you need more advanced features, then a tool like Doctrine um, can definitely facilitate that. But right out of the box, if you just want to be able to track when something was updated, when a row was updated on a particular table, it's very easy to do that with MySQL's timestamp functionality. So let's start adding that. We've got two tables here. We've got an author table and we've got a post table. I'm just going to move the information in the author table down here. We'll just keep all our insert statements together for, for now. And after the author ID, or actually before the author ID, I want to add some new columns. The first column that I'm going to be adding is a publish date. And that's going to be of type date time. I'm also going to add an expire date. And that's also going to be of type date time. And then I'm going to add a updated which will be of type timestamp, where the default property of that is going to be now, which is, a, by the way, this is a function. This is a MySQL function, just like count is a MySQL function. And on update, it's also going to be now. And then we'll just add another comma. So what this actually means, practically, is that when we first create a record, the updated timestamp is going to show now. And then once it's updated on update, just like when here we have on delete no action, here we're saying on update, we want to update it to now. And now being the relative time that the database performed the update. To better illustrate this, I'm going to add some sleep statements in between my various posts. So I'm going to say sleep, or it's actually select sleep and I'm just going to sleep for two seconds here and I'm going to sleep for one second here and I'm going to sleep for one second here. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. So if I go back to my terminal here and I just paste all this in, it's going to take a little longer. You'll see that we're running these sleep statements. But now if I do a select star from post, watch what happens. You'll notice that I've got one inserted at 12.32 and 12 seconds, one inserted at 12.32 and 13 seconds, one inserted at 12.32 and 15 seconds, so you can see there's that difference used from the sleep command, and one inserted at 12.32 and 16 seconds, actually two of them are. So 
The other values right now are null and that's fine. We're not gonna mess around with that just quite yet. Um, however, you can see that uh, basically we've got these timestamps and we had to do very little work to get them. Now what's neat about this is that your web application doesn't necessarily need to handle the insertions of these dates. For example, if I want to do an update on political posting, and, oops, sorry, if I want to update post set title equals political posting, and I'm just going to uppercase it, not tile, but title, and it's going to be where id equals 1. If I do another select statement here, you can see now that political posting has now been updated to 1233.31. So by very quickly just you know doing this one update, I'm also going to inadvertently, it's like a trigger on a gun. So you know you do one thing and then another thing fires or a, a tripwire or something like that. So as soon as you update a record, then immediately the updated column is also going to be updated. So it makes for auditing very, very easy and very effective. Um, you know, on our authors table, if we wanted to extend this example a little bit, I could add the same sort of column right here. Oops, I don't want to do tabs because when I paste it'll act funny. So select all this, paste it back in. Now if I do a select star from author, I'm going to have the various you know authors and when they were inserted into the database. Now actually let's just add some sleep statements so again we can see what's really happening. And uh, to better illustrate my point I'm actually going to change the IDs so they're in the reverse order. So 3, 2, and 1. Or 3, 1, and 2. Better yet. Run this again. Sleep just tells MySQL to take a break and waste some CPU cycles on your behalf. So if we do select star from author, now we're going to get various insertion dates, right? So actually they're out of order when you just do your regular select star from author.